Morning, I'm Rodney Dunnigan. At this hour, major concern regarding the latest COVID numbers across the state. The number of positive cases continues to rise. Let's take a look at the latest numbers from the state. Developing at this hour, an investigation is underway after a woman's body was found in a parking lot near Upper Arlington. Alexis Moberger with details on where this case stands tonight. We continue to follow a developing story on the east side tonight. Police investigating yet another shooting in the city. The victim this time, an 86-year-old woman. Tom Bosco has the latest on the investigation and calls for peace tonight. We continue to follow a developing story on the east side tonight. Police investigating yet another shooting in the city. The victim this time, an 86-year-old woman. Tom Bosco has the latest on the investigation and calls for peace tonight. Violence in Columbus has largely been among the young people in the city, at least throughout most of the year. But now an 86 year old woman is a victim. She was shot peering through her back door. A nearby neighbor heard the whole thing. We heard, I would say, about. Good evening, I'm Rodney Dunnigan. We're tracking a number of developing stories tonight, including the president's health. We've got up to the minute information as he works to recover from the coronavirus. Also, a day of prayer across Ohio. The governor calling for people across the state to reflect on the impact of the virus. We've got team coverage tonight. A big moment tonight outside of Walter Reed Medical Center where President Trump is recovering from COVID-19. You can see here he took a ride to wave to supporters outside of the hospital. And tonight, doctors say the health of President Trump is improving, but some question if clear information is being released. Christine Frazal has the very latest. Now reporting. There's also concern tonight right here in Ohio about who may have been exposed to the virus at this past week's debate in Cleveland. Governor Mike DeWine spoke about some of those concerns today. The governor also calling for a day of prayer today across the state, an effort to not only think about the president and the first lady, but people all across the country impacted by this virus. Mary Smith has that side of the story tonight. Mary. Now on a story that you first heard about here last night at 11. For the first time, we're seeing the face of the man behind that road rage shooting along 270. That 58-year-old charged with a felony tonight. Around the state tonight, a teenager accused of killing his five-year-old sister in Maryland was arrested after a high-speed chase near Springfield. Dan Lamp has the latest on that investigation. Riding for a cause, the Columbus crew teaming up with the community in the fight against cancer. It's all a part of a mission to save lives. Jesse Starkey has the story. All new tonight, a group of local artists giving back to students learning online. Photojournalist Moosh Nickerson with an inside look at how the project is making an impact. All right, turning back to the forecast, uh, Caroline tracking things for us this weekend. Caroline, it has definitely had that fall feel this weekend, but thankfully uh, things heating up a bit just this week. Yeah, so imagine this. You lose your father and the landlord tells you that you can't get his stuff and you won't believe what happened when we went to the complex this afternoon. Then this one, we did a family portrait. My big brother, my father, my little sister, mother, me, and my little brother. Tyrone Hawkins is at a loss after his dad died last month. Yeah, it's hard because we, we talk all the time. Like, so, you know, just not to be able to call his phone then he pick up, hey, little Ty, what's going on? Like, or with my siblings, like, it's hard. He figured he'd have no issues getting his belongings, getting quite the shock when management at his apartment said that wasn't going to happen. His rent was paid prior to him passing, so that gave us to October 1st. He says the landlord offered to charge the family to keep the belongings locked in the apartment and indicated they'd have to flush it all out in probate court. They want us to pay month to month to month until this goes to court. Then there's this. As we spoke with the family Friday afternoon, they discovered an eviction notice on the door. This for a man who's been deceased nearly a month. Also, a parking ticket on his dad's van. I'm already stressed and they just adding to the stress. We went to the management office on site, but were told it was open only two days a week. This wasn't one of those days. We reached out to the corporate office and were given a statement saying in part, we are obligated to follow the legal process. In the absence of a will or named executor, the family must request the appropriate permission from the probate court to obtain the rights to the belongings. For his part, Hawkins says he's willing to work with the management. He just wants his father others things and we've been patient about it yeah. so but you only can be patient for so long 
In cases like this, property owners do have the right to recoup any rent due, but many times they will work with families. Of course, we will continue to work this case and try to help this family work something out. Another very important note, experts say to always have a will and have your estate plans laid out. This way, it will help out if you eventually have to go to court. Reporting live in studio tonight, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC 6 News. Family has taken this entire experience as a learning lesson. Thankful tonight to know that there are honest business owners out there willing to help. Mary Ann Crabtree admits she's learned a costly lesson. You think, well, I'm never going to fall for that, you know, and then what did we do? Crabtree says she and her husband paid local contractor Dave Kimmel thousands up front for a driveway repair job that was never done. It's been very frustrating for both of us. We've discovered Dave Kimmel has a history of similar complaints. Customers paying and the work never getting done. Hey, how you doing? Rodney Dunning with Channel 6. After calling the company numerous times and getting no response, we found Kimmel at home. Get this, he denies the couple ever paid any money. They paid you $2,500. No, they didn't. So who did they pay $2,500 to? I don't know. Kimmel says the other complaints against his company are all lies as well. Also stressing no one has contacted him about trouble. I've called you several times and left you several messages. Nobody's been calling me. I've, I've called your number several times and left you messages. Well, I haven't got them. On my phone? Yes, on your phone. No. You so got I, the wrong number then. Your number is 206-1058. The number here on your car? Is this not your number? Yeah, this is me and my sons. Yeah, that's the number I've been calling. Yeah. That's the number they've been calling too. As to why everyone seems to be lying about his business practices, he doesn't really have an answer for that. No, they have not given me money. Okay, so every everybody, all these people are making this stuff up. Yeah, well, you're making it up right now. I got to go. Have a great day. The good news for Crabtree, a number of local businesses have stepped forward willing to lend a hand. This family is hoping their story serves as a major warning to others. Do your research before coughing over any cash. It could end up saving you big time. Rodney Dunnigan, six on your side. Marshall, I'll tell you what, the fun just started here at 6 o'clock, and there are a number of kids, if you uh, look to my side here, who have already come out to collect those uh, goodies. You know, kids have to get that candy despite the weather, and, you know, because of the weather, a lot of communities decided to uh, push things off to this weekend, as you said. So if you're one of those families who are lucky enough to get out tonight in Upper Arlington or possibly this weekend, there are a few important things that you do need to remember. It's beggar's night across some parts of central Ohio tonight. Unfortunately, many of those kids begging Mother Nature for better weather. Due to the rain and cold temps, many communities moving the fun to Saturday. Obet's one of those letting folks know early today. Groveport making the same move. Kids in Galena can enjoy the fun on Saturday as well. Canal Winchester sending out the same message. This year, certainly unlike any other due to COVID, a few things to remember from a health standpoint this weekend, wear a face covering, a costume mask is not enough, and remember to social distance. Be creative when passing out that candy, this cool contraption created by a worker at Franklin County Public Health. Also, parents, make sure your kids wash their hands before eating and after touching those candy wrappers. And, of course, uh, again, the uh, fun just started here at Upper Arlington. It's running until 8 tonight. And uh, something that we've noticed, uh, a lot of these neighbors, they have these tents set up to give the kids a candy so they can have that uh, social distance, of course. Everybody out here trying to have a bit of fun. But, of course, uh, this year during COVID, safety, obviously, is priority number one. Unfortunately, though, for these kids, the rain is uh, really starting to come down. But that is not uh, stopping the excitement. Uh, loving these costumes I'm seeing so far. Reporting live out in Upper Arlington, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC 6 News.